Yeah, I wish I'd known we were going to do it. Welcome to the maiden voyage of the Art of Spooning podcast. I'm Michael Gardner. My partner over there is the foodie whisperer himself, Sheen Fisher. Uh, just so we're clear, the Art of Spooning, I had nothing to do with that name. Methinks the lady doth protest a bit too much. Yeah, well, I had nothing to do with that name. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, sitting, sitting between Sheen and I is someone you probably already recognize, does not need an introduction, Brian Malarkey. Uh, you might know him from his long run. Street cooking, so the fact that I got to beat Ludo, that, that was some, that's, 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 that's street pretty, cred yeah, right yeah, there. That's that, yeah, Ludo Lefebvre is um, I, you know, among, the, uh, among the best French chefs working in America, um, and his character is um, mercurial. Uh, don't use big words with me. I'm just a chef here. Um, so um, I want to take it back a second real quick here. So the art of spooning. The one that should be most nervous about the art of spooning title is the guy in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, 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 get to, you get to serve us. Oh, well, oh okay. I, I was like, hey, Michael, hey come on in. <laughs> Michael has an answer to that, actually. Spooning leads to... Forking, yeah, yeah, which, which, yeah. Does, which does Again, not make anything <laughs> any better. Right? <laughs> well, but it's, it was the other way around. Forking led to spooning, and since the, the, the my previous po- podcast was called the uh, was called all forked up. Oh, Fork, forking left led to spooning. This is getting wild. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, there's something about utensils with this guy. Yeah, yeah. You, you're just you should just being in the middle. You should be very glad that we it wasn't a that knife is, joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. A little Julius Caesar for us there. Um, yeah, right. uh, back back to subject. We're talking about uh, no, co- so, co- so, cooking so, on TV and stuff. Cooking on TV, but um, I mean. Want to introduce your your current restaurants? Our Urban Wood is um, is absolutely fantastic. Both Sheen and I have uh, have reviewed it. Um, been there you know, a number of times. Um, what else do you have today? Um, you know, um, thank you both very much for your reviews. Some of the most pleasant Sheen's was one of the most pleasant reviews I've ever read, and just very nice and detailed, and showed me that he really was committed to the food and the story, and he got the whole package. Yours, I just read for pure entertainment, Michael. Um, <laughs> I wish we could show the 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 excerpt of this right here. So you kind of like, I, I I love it. Call me out. You know, you did this. You opened these restaurants, and the, the, you had some failed restaurants, and you got back up. You yourself off and then you kind of really regrouped and got the team back together and you put together just the best package um, when the chef owner puts your review up in the restaurant so where did you put mine I, I love that you, <laughs> this is a setup question so if you do want to read Michael's review of my restaurant you can go into the into the restroom and it's right above the urinal <laughs> <laughs> naturally <laughs> I absolutely love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you're, it, it was talking about Mark Wahlberg's large member and like pulling it out and looking at himself in the mirror and saying, "This is me. This is who I am. Why yeah. did I ever pretend?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and and, and look, I I, I wrote a, that. I wrote you have that. a twisted mind, my friend. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I confess to that. But you know what 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 I meant by that um, was obviously a, a little bit of humor. Um, yeah. But you know the fact is that uh, what I love about urban wood is it is your food there absolutely captures what you do with food um i I mean if you if somebody has your cookbook um and looks at it and you know um, you you were dealing with a lot of different restaurants in in your whole fabric of social dining there going through each one of them but if you look at, at at what ties all of those dishes together you can go to urban wood and you can taste that um, yeah, you know, um, I, I give a ton of credit uh, to Shane McIntyre and to our, our, our amazing sous chefs and the, uh, mm-hmm. Pat Patrick, who unfortunately is leaving us right now and moving to uh, Austin. Austin will be better for that. Um, but it was it's an incredible team, and we did. You know, Shane helped me open all those. Shane McIntyre, um, arguably the best or one of the best chefs in all of San Diego, is my partner in this restaurant, so my life is pretty easy. But... Um, what it is is Shane and I opened all those restaurants. We opened Seersucker. We opened Burlap. We opened Gingham and Gabardine and Herringbone. And we kept playing with things and trying different things and putting different things out there. And then, you know, it, it, it's a great success story. Hakkasan takes it to the next level. They're opening um, Herringbone Waikiki, Herringbone Cabo. We've got restaurants in Vegas and L.A. Um, so Shane and I, when it was time for us to kind of regroup and do it again, 
we really wanted to ask ourselves, like, what kind of food is it that really represents us and who we stand for? And the eating trips that we went on were epic. You know, we went through oh, por- Portland, Oregon, Austin, what Texas, Los Angeles. And we really got to the gist of it and, and, and realized that we just wanted really good, clean food with the essence of wood fire, you know? Yeah. So um, it, it is amazing. And we, we, we learned to work with a lot of acid. Yep. A lot of bright vinegars and acids and citrus and herbs and just really fresh and really clean and really let the food speak for itself. Which, by the way, I think the acid is really what, what is making your dishes right now. Yeah. Um, let's back up a little bit. So, so on, on that, real quick, I want to give uh, credit to somebody. who. So Shane and I, on this epic eat trip, yeah. we, we – we, Typically, would pigeon so, pigeon ourselves into um, put ourselves into um, wood fire restaurants and that kind of thing, like Ox in Portland, Oregon. Yep. Just oh, God, I love that you place. Know? Right, um, and but we truly really, sometimes we get off the beaten path and be kind of over that. And one time we were up in L.A. and we went to Night Market, and I cannot oh, yeah. recall the oh, chef's yes. name of Night Market, but it's the family Thai restaurant that the son took over and he took it in kind of a maverick Thai direction. We're eating in there, and we're just – our faces are exploding, and we're like, this is like the most amazing food I've ever had in my entire life. Hashtag go check out Night Market in L.A. Um, but uh, we're eating this, and we're like, what, what is this? You know, it's a braised pork shank. You know, obviously you're using a lot of Asian flavors and soys and misos and yuzus and all these things, but it was the acid. It was just the acid that he had just taken it to a whole new level, oh, yeah. and it was uh, incredible, and we are like, we've got to take that. You know, take that idea. Makes it pop. I also want to bring, yeah. bring you back to Ox because that was, in, in many ways, it's interesting you said that because I was up there with uh, Todd Sturtz, who's uh, you know, lived here for a while, big foodie in, uh, in, in the community here. Um, and I saw, I saw that place as a cross between urban wood and trust. You know, and, and, and uh, I take that into the, the, another direction here. Also, you just brought up one of my other favorite restaurants in town. And um, the, sh- the, you know, the, sh- the, the chef Shane McIntyre and mm-hmm. uh, the amazing chef, uh, his name eludes me right now. Brad Wise. Brad Wise, uh, the amazing chef at Campfire. Yep. These guys are on the next level right now. Actually, all right. Yeah. These three right there, those are, those are my three favorite restaurants in town. And, you know, I, I would be an asshole if I said, yes, Urban, well, Urban Wood is one of the best restaurants in town if I was helming the stove every single day. But I'm not. I just guide and give opinions and guidance and I'm more, mm-hmm. you know, kind of – Standing, standing, watching it and observing it and kind of yeah. helping her along the way. But um, the chefs on these restaurants, these three chefs are really taking the food scene by storm here in San Diego. Campfire, Trust, and Urban Wood. Yeah. Well, would, uh, would you say, uh, uh, you know, talking about your role in the restaurant, did you rediscover some passion? You know, when I was – when I ate your restaurant, you were working every table. You had your smile on. You were, but you were – sincerely interested. You weren't just stopping at the top of the table going, hey, how's everything? You were stopping at the table talking to people. Is that something that you felt you got away from and now you have rediscovered, you know, reignited something? Or You know, opening all the restaurants uh, so fast, was it was fun. You know, you're always in the press. You're always, you know, I mean, it's always a party. The staff's fresh. Everyone's great. And then I kind of, you know, I, I, I enjoyed that and it was great. But when we did Urban Wood, I started thinking, I was like, you know what? I want to know my dishwasher's names. I want to know the line cook's names. And I want to spend time in here and I want to get to know the place and I want to feel it and, you know, and be super proud of everything from the service to the food, to the music, to the touch. Uh, my partner, Chris Puffer, there's three of us, Shane McIntyre, Chris Puffer, and yeah. I, he designed the restaurant. First time restaurant designer. And um, it, he, it, he didn't just immediately say, I'm going to design the restaurant. It was after we kept interviewing people and we kept telling them our idea. And they're like, no, we could do this. this. <laughs> we're like, no, we could do this. And one day we're like, Puffer's like, just let me do it. And, uh, I mean, it, it's won design That's awards great. and everything yeah. like that. So we, we take pride in every single little step of that whole place. And... When I'm not home, there's no place I'd rather be than at Urban Wood and Urban Eatery. It's, a, it's just got a, such a great vibe and a great feel, and it's family, and everyone's happy and healthy and knock on hardwood. What, what do you see your role at Urban Wood as being? Um, I'm um, – I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's a tough one. Uh, you know, I, I have ideas. I get to go eat and travel and do stuff. And I'm like, Shane, what if we did this? Man, I got to have this sea urchin pizza, man. I've been dying for this. And so Shane will go in there. We'll give a little details, tweak it out. I'm definitely more, more owner. Sea restaurant. urchin pizza. 
Oh my god, it's amazing. We're putting it back on real soon. Uh, it's incredible. Are you going to take back what you said the other day? Uh, as long as there's no pineapple on it, I think I'll be okay with it. <laughs> you know that, a, how does how does the how does the sea urchin not get lost in the pizza? It must be a white pizza. Uh, yeah, it's just actually just an olive oil pizza. So it's oh, olive oil, and then yeah, you have a little, olive oil, a little burrata, and then we do trout roe to really brighten it up. Oh, it's got yeah. some nice acid on it and herbs, and you it pops. It's I, one, I one, can see that, but too much acid, I think you're going right. to wash out that that uni. Oh right? no, I love you, but a little bit, I a will little take bit, care a little bit of acid will pair with. Oh no no, I love it. It's it's my favorite thing in the world. I just think that. Let's be honest. We're San Diego. We got a lot of sea urchin. People are trying to find unique and inventive ways of the Japanese using come them. here. Doesn't always work for their sea urchin. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no better sea urchin than what Tommy gets at Catalina Tom, right absolutely. here. And I live in Point Loma, and I know where it is. You guys, I'm coming to get it myself. Uh, <laughs> well, so the first time I interviewed Tommy, he you know has the guy that that coddles the sea urchins every morning, take me in and. And the uh, guy starts picking up. He goes, ooh, these are a little stressed this morning. I'm like, you know you got a good sea urchin guy when they can pick up a sea urchin and go, Basically, this, this baby's a little stressed this I, morning. Wow. I refer to it as Wagyu sea urchin. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good. No, it's Although just... that's that, – yeah, yeah, that's a double entendre, I guess, in a lot of ways. But uh, – uh, talk about urban eatery. I know there's a uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. We're supposed to be going to a thing next Wednesday. Did you next Wednesday? Did you revamp the menu? What's going on over there? So, um, you know, I'm when what kind of went down was when Puffer and I were kind of looking for a building, right? Uh, we were cruising around. We went downtown on the gas lamp. We went over to you know the police headquarters and East Village and La Jolla and the Hills, and we checked everything out. And we were driving around, and I looked at this building, and I was like, one, it's right next to Richard Blaze, and, you know, it's nice to, nice to gather together to build some good hype. And um, I'm like, that's the building I've always wanted to open a restaurant in. And it was um, that, um, yeah. I, I can't even remember the name of it, uh, it was the furniture store, the high-end furniture store, absolutely beautiful. And we went in and started talking to the owners, got to know them, and they actually wanted to move back to uh, Louisiana with their kids and stuff. They they wanted them to be uh, see the grandparents. Why would anyone want to uh, you know, go to Louisiana? Hey, hey, hey. Watch it, man. <laughs> Is that where you're from? That's where I'm from. What part? Home of Louisiana. It's about 50 miles southwest of New Orleans. All right. So we're way down New in Orleans is going crazy. I got to get yeah, down there and eat a... some food right oh, now. Oh, me too. You know. um, so anyway, we walked into this, this building. And we're like, oh, my gosh, we have to get this. And we got it. And all of a sudden, Puffer and I are like, oh, my gosh, we saw Urban Wood. Like, that's easy. That's what we do. We saw Urban Wood. We saw where the kitchen was, the bathroom. We had it all figured out. We're like, what do we do with this front part, right? And it wasn't like we were into making markets and kind of fast casual sort of thing, although Green Acre and Farmer of the Seahorse are a little bit like that. But um, we're like, this is going to be our market. And so we started, like, formulating and figuring it out. And right now, Urban Eatery is – I, I – I, I, from we believe also one of the best breakfast and lunch places mm-hmm. in town. Absolutely incredible. We have um, Love it. amazing, amazing eggs, and we bake all of our bread in-house. The Ad- croissant. Uh, the croissant. Adrian yeah. Mendoza is our pastry chef. He's on the next level. This, this croissant. I have these nice little French ladies that come in every single week, and this is better than at home, you know? Um, oh, we had Tyrion Lannister used to come in every week. <laughs> nice. Tyr- yes. Uh, he was in town. His wife was um, uh, directing a play in town. So I oh, was yeah? like, oh, my gosh, Tyrion Lannister's here. Um, but uh, he's gone back to New York, everybody. Don't flock to Urban Eatery looking for him. Um, but you can flock to Urban Eatery. You're not going to turn that down. you must flock to Urban Eatery. Brad Pitt was seen there this morning. <laughs> 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 no, it, it, it was actually Brian wearing a Brad Pitt outfit. It, it might be. It might be. But uh, Urban Eatery is just the cutest uh, cafe, grocery market. You can buy your beer, buy your wine, get food to go, get food to stay, big bowls of salad. Everything's just super fresh. Um, and it's, it's, it's so great and so casual. And people come in and they camp out and play. We have board games upstairs. Uh, we open the gallery. We have the largest private dining room right now. We have a dining room, a private dining room that seats over 100 people. Yep. Wow. Um, and that's our gallery. So urban, urban wood, urban eatery, urban gallery. We have 16,000 square feet down there. So it's a mini city. And uh, it's really starting to bring the community together. The market's ahead of its time for the area. There's nobody that lives in that area. There's like one, one apartment building. Yeah, I have yeah, – yeah. oh, they're all coming. Yeah, I can see coming. them coming. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, so it's a it's a bit of a destination, and so night wasn't going. Nobody wants to eat a sandwich at nighttime, and the salads weren't you know they weren't selling at night. So what we've done there is we actually um, are just selling the wood fire pizzas from Urban Wood up in the market, and we're calling it our pizza parlor. Oh. Yeah. So it's an urban eatery pizza parlor every night. You go grab a beer off the shelf, mm-hmm. get a couple cold glasses, wine, whatever. You got about six pizzas, a couple specials of the day, a couple salads of the day, and that's it. Real high and tight. A um, little inspiration from our good friends up in uh, Encinitas with Blue Ribbon Pizza. Yep. Pizza, salad, dessert, that's what you got. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of this is really an extension of what you were trying to do before with the fabric of social dining, right? That was really your concept is you wanted people to come in and just have this big social experience with great food and chill out and relax and whatever. And now it feels like it's it's kind of coming together. I mean, you got two somewhat disparate concepts, right? You got the fine dining, urban wood, you got the urban eatery, which is kind of a casual market, but between the two of them, you've kind of created a little monolith over there. You know, um, back in my, my early culinary days, I, I started in uh, the Pacific Northwest and L.A., and I wound up in Minneapolis for a while. And, oh, did uh, you? Yeah, Minneapolis has an incredible food scene, but there was this restaurant out there called the Loring Cafe, and anybody from Minneapolis is like, yes. And it was this village. It, was a, it wasn't just like you're going to work. You're going to hang out with the coolest people in town, your best friends. And it was just these people all coming together. And it was this huge restaurant, sprawling restaurant with different areas and different seats. And at night, they got to be on the saxophone, sit up in the, in the rafters and stuff. And it was just this magical place. And I've always wanted to replicate that, you know, for the line cooks coming up, the servers, the bartenders, everybody's friends, and they're cool, and they hang out, and they have a good time. And most importantly, we are there to entertain and have fun and throw a party for our guests. Nice, nice. All right. Well, uh, Kurt Metzger uh, you know, commented that he misses San Diego. San, uh, Kurt, San Diego misses you. Where did Kurt go? Kurt's up in Orange County. Oh, Nice. Kurt, I'm, I'm forgetting the uh, mixtures. I'm, oh, thank you for the uh, name of the furniture store. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Kurt, I'm I'm uh, I'm forgetting the name of uh, your restaurant up there. If you want to, uh, if you want to pop it on there, I'll uh, we'll give it a, a shout out. I'll let you know when it does. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. This is my first podcast world. I want you to know, and my good friend Jack Mancino just joined. He's the foie gras man. Uh, Jack, nice to see you're in on this. Jack used to be a sous chef and a chef with me, and uh, we have a long, what? wonderful history. Where? Uh, oh, my gosh. Jack Mancino and I go way back to the Ocean Air yeah. days, yeah, that's right? What I figured. Yeah, He came over from Buca de Beppo, uh, which uh-huh. was a sister restaurant to Ocean Air uh, back in the day. And he came over, and things were great, and he was a great sous chef. We had a lot of fun, and this is a great story. It could lead us into uh, – Thomas Hill, Thomas Hill Organics up in Paso Robles. That's, oh, nice. That's where, All right, everybody go to Thomas Hills Organics in Paso yeah, Robles. Well, uh, first off, Paso Robles is a, is, is a great town. It's an absolutely fantastic wine region, um, but it's also become one of, the, uh, one of the top foodie destinations in the Central Coast. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Congratulations, Kurt. Yeah. All right, back to – this is going to lead us into our next little segment right here. But um, So uh, Jack went back to be the chef partner of Buca, and we were like, what are you doing, man? You can't leave this great seafood restaurant to go back and start tossing pasta again. And so it was around um, Halloween time, and so we called our good friends from Specialty Produce right here, yep. and we said, what's the biggest pumpkin you've got? And they were like, oh, my God, we have this like 250-pound pumpkin. We don't know what to do with it. And I was like, bring it to me. <laughs> and they brought it to uh, the Ocean Air right before pre ship one day, pulled it up into the truck. All the staff went out there and signed it, and a lot of it was not appropriate stuff, and signed this pumpkin for Jack Mancino. We drove by the front of Buca de Beppo. We put it on a cart, <laughs> ran it into his kitchen, and dumped it in the middle of his kitchen. <laughs> took the cart and ran because there was no way he was going to be able to pick it up and move it. So uh, I think they had to go through service with a giant pumpkin in the middle of their kitchen. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> That's great. So, I, you know, w- with that in mind, um, let's talk a bit about um, – the specialty produce vegetable of the week. Um, you know, every 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 show, um, a, every segment, we are going to do a, um, a specific vegetable that I go before the show and pull from the organic cooler and specialty produce. Um, we're recording in the specialty produce network um, space, which is within the specialty produce building. Um, and today I pulled this uh, sweet little pie pumpkin. So what would you do with it? 
Uh, cute little pie pumpkin. Uh, my old self uh, would have taken it, peeled it, roasted, um, and made just a nice little pumpkin soup out of it. You okay. know, be it um, using cream or coconut milk or whatever, or a, curry, a curried potato. Yeah. I mean, a curried pumpkin is always amazing. A lot of good flavors there. But uh, my new me is over my blender. I used to live by my blender, and I realize a lot of chefs use the blender as – um, a crutch, I think, and everything goes in the blender. Yeah. I'm tired of baby food. I'm tired of pureeing everything. I'm tired of all of it. Uh, the backward spoon and the whole thing going on. So the new me would actually um, even – I would just chop it up and I would put it – because I'm very fortunate at Urban Wood, we have a wood fire grill yeah, you do. and a wood fire oven. Uh, the flavor and the caramelization you get from that and the textures and the smoke, everything you get from that wood fire is so intense and so amazing – so I would leave the skin on it. I would uh, I would season it up with olive oil, salt, and I would just char it. I would burn it. Um, I watched uh, Chef's Table, yeah. the Francis Millman oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, – And life changed. I was yeah. like, we burn stuff. Yeah. Burning is good. We cavemen. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Burning so, is good. All right. So what's the acid that you're going to dress that with? Uh, it's, it's – you know, you can you ask yourself if you want to go Asian, you want to go Italian, we want to go kind of French on it. Um on a pumpkin, I, I think maybe a sherry vinegar would be really bright on it. Uh, some nice big shallot, some big, you know, kind of you add a few things like that. Um, you know, it's kind of fun to take the pepitos or the pumpkin seeds or some mm-hmm. sort of that and add your textural change to it. I would think like a little bit of a frisé or a bitter burnt endive would be mm-hmm. really good with this. That would be fantastic. And, you know, even at Urban Wood now, we only have one leaf green salad. I'm kind of – I mean, in the market, Urban Eatery, there's a – Great variety of big leafy greens, but I think at dinner time the big salad is not really the thing. So Shane has this way of making these amazing, like light mm-hmm. vegetable enhancements, we'll call them, yeah. and not salads. Yeah. Um, and we have a huge vegetable section on the menu down there, and it's just very subtle um, touches, but big bright flavors. You know, um, you can go with. I don't know if I would do a citrus on that. I don't know. Uh, I would I would stick to a kind of a heavier balsamic too mundane. I think I think balsamic maybe a white Sweet. balsamic. I, I was thinking white balsamic. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a white balsamic. Um, you know, I think you want it to be nice and robust. Uh, yeah. yeah. What would you do with it? Where would you go um, for it? I know where I'd go for it. Uh, Dave and Wait wrench and wrote it. Uh, oh, yeah. When I met him, week just a couple of weeks after he. I'm a huge fan. Was, I love him too. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you know. Fall is his season. I mean, if if there's anything, I don't think there's a season that isn't. His I season. think yeah, he's on that short list of my favorite chefs in fall. Yeah, 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 season. If, if you ever want to see the best of what he's got, you got to go yeah. in the fall. And so, one of the very first things I had, maybe, maybe the second trip I was there, which was, was still probably the first day I showed up, um, he broke out this pumpkin soup, and it's, I'm just like, first of all, pumpkin soup. Yeah, it's four or five years ago. Not everybody was doing it then. And uh, it kind of blew me away. And to this day, when fall rolls around, we go running back in there for his pumpkin yeah. soup. Nice. So that's what's that's the, what I would do. What's the touch? Um, it's curried, first yeah. of all. Uh, he's got, uh, even though you know you can't see the Indian in him. No, he has no Indian. Uh, he, well, he's, he's very English, good so up, we don't know about up, that for sure. His dad, his dad taught him how to cook with curry. So he grew up kind of like some of us grew up cooking scrambled eggs. That's what I grew up cooking. Yeah. He grew up cooking curries. Yeah. So curries, cream. Um, and then the Dave and Magic. I mean, how you know? How do you look at the stuff that he's got on his cutting board, and it ends up like this? Yeah, basically, right? Yeah. So, yeah. very, very good stuff. That's what. I That's think what you do. It. I'm. Um, I'm actually. I, I pulled this because we're going to be using it on Thursday. We're recording this um, uh, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and I've got a vegan niece, which um, means that I've got to do. Um, a vegan main along with the turkey, and so I'm going to be doing a brown and uh, and uh, white rice stuffing, um, probably with an ingredient that we're going to see in a little bit in the second segment. Oh, nice! Um, uh, in there, and uh, j- and just stuff it and you know treat it like that's the turkey. I'm going to do almost exactly what you said. Um, I'm going to rub it with olive oil, season the heck out of uh, you know out of the inside liberally. Um, and then you know, then serve it that way. I was going to be for my acid. I was going to be going straight with uh, with lemon. Yeah. I you know I just want to you want to you keep can it, never keep it ever ever go wrong with lemon. Yeah. You use the zest. You use the segments. You yep. use the juice. Everything. So yeah. I'm a huge. I'm, I mean, my discovery, uh, my kitchen discovery, 
um, of the second half of this year has been lemon zest. I've obviously used it I, all along, but I was like, oh, wow, I found religion. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, just love oh, that you stuff. you get that pure essence without all the acid yeah. with the zest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Well, I, the, the frisé thing kind of blows. I, I love oh. that. I love that idea. Well, right, because what you're doing is you're actually transitioning from the bitterness of the burnt, the smoke. Yeah. You're transitioning that now into a leafy green and kind of the bitterness of that well, frisé fris- fris- is causing yes. that transition. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What I'm thinking of I doing thought the, the, is – the pomegranate would be amazing with oh, that yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Pomegranate? Yeah. yeah really pomegranate. Oh, pom- pom- yeah. Just the, the – pomegranate's gorgeous. Yeah. But I'm you know, using your idea of the um, uh, of the frisé or, or endive or um, or curly endive or something like that. I'm going to burn that and pop that on top as a garnish. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Blow torches for all. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk turkey. What are you What are you doing for your turkey this year? Oh, I'm I'm actually I'm going to smoke it. Nice. I'm smoking my turkey too. Yeah. It's it's it's, How, it's evolutionary. I I did it last year and I was like, why did I not do this? this? How do you fit it in the pipe? Uh, <laughs> it's a big pipe. <laughs> um, so I take my grill and I have an electric grill, yeah. uh, decor. Thank you very much. I have an electric grill. Yeah. And, um, what I do is I take some firewood. Uh, we have this amazing white Oak, uh, that we get from East County, Hamul and stuff like that, that we use at Irvine yeah. Wood. And I, I get it, get it burning. And then I transfer it onto like a little small sheet tray and I get the smoke and I just turn my grill into a smoker. And, right. la- and last year what I did, and I'm going to do it as soon as I leave here, is I, d- I take my, my turkey off the bone. Uh-huh. I split it, split the, the chest, take yep. it, keep the leg bones in, take the breast out, um, and then I brine it for a couple days, air dry yep. it. I'm going to run out of time here pretty soon. I need to – I should have done it yesterday or the day before. <laughs> uh, air dry it so I get it really dry and then uh, smoke it uh, and it cooked in like two hours and just the smoke yep. just bellowing, bellowing. Yeah. It changed the texture of the turkey. It made it so moist and so great. And then I do it exactly like we do with um, the chicken at Urban Wood. We do it like that. We pound the chicken at Urban Wood uh, so it cooks really fast because I hate pre-cooked anything. And uh, we just do a really bright, herbaceous, like tarragon chimichurri with a lot of like capers. It's really – it's a salsa verde, right? And yeah. so I just rub it all over when it's done, and that's what I'm going to do with the turkey. That's what I did last year, and I've been – I've been just so excited to do it again this year. How do you handle the skin? The skin gets a little tough when you smoke it. How the do you crisp it up? The skin, what I did was I smoked it the whole time on the on the flesh side with the skin side yep. up, right? right? And then at the last – like for the last like five minutes, I, turned, I took it off. I turned the grill on high as I could. <laughs> I flipped it back on there and then I put the sheet tray on top of it and I put a bunch of weight on it. And it just yeah, got a nice just crisp up. perfect. Yeah. 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 Because it was so dried out at that point, it was just yeah. begging to get crispy, yeah, yeah. and it was just crunchy, and it just looked so nice. Uh, but this year now, I'm expanding my yeah. my. I'm going. I'm going to smoke a leg of lamb also. Oh, nice! And a pork shoulder, so it's going to be a crowded little grill <laughs> in there. But I'm like, I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm going to spatchcock it. I'm going to. What'd you just say? Spatchcock. Yeah. <laughs> Spooning, forking, spatchcocking. Here we go. He said cock. <laughs> I don't know what spatchcock is. <laughs> no, it's just basically what would you say? Spreading it out. When you take the bird. So spread I'm going to go spatchcock my bird after this. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and uh, brine it and smoke it. I'm going to go over apple. Uh-huh. Um, and Do you then, have a smoker? I have a smoker. Okay. And then, um, and then I basically use my use my Weber to keep prepping coals to put in there. Oh, so perfect. I'm going to have a night. I'm going to have some nice, really hot coals. And at the end, I'm just going to take the bird, skin side down, yep, exactly it. the way you, uh, you were describing it. Just get that all nice and crisp. Oh, so good. Yeah. That's good. And no turkey for me. No turkey yeah, for you. Well, we will no eat turkey. turkey. My fam- my wife's family gets together. Everybody brings something. My job is to bring the lobster bisque. I have a Ooh, great. That's little, not a bad idea. Yeah, no, never a bad a, idea. It's a great. You know, it's a lot of butter, a lot of cream, and then my my little key elements are Hungarian pa- paprika, uh-huh. yep. a little smoky flavor, and then I've got some uh, ground pakil pepper that Patrick, oh sweet uh, uh. Ponsati gave me, and I'm you know I ration that out very carefully, but. Those two things pa- give it just a little bit of spice and smoke and pop, and Piccio's we're off to, the, yeah, off to the races. All right, guys. Well, uh, this is a, a great first episode for uh, The Artist Spooning, and uh, stay tuned, and we'll be coming back with uh, episode two, part two of Talking Malarkey. Talking Malarkey. Talking Turkey. Talking Turkey. <laughs>